My name is Sally, and I'm here to help you find a husband. Why you need a husband is not important to me. It may be to complement your lifestyle. It may be about a helping hand around and outside of the house. It may be to start a family. It may be whatever else comes into your mind. I am not going to analyze your motives. I'm just going to give you advice about making your desire become reality. Are you ready to come along with me? Okay, let's go. What does he look like? When you're looking for anything at all, it is always important to have a clear idea what it looks like. But if you don't know what it looks like, then how are you going to know you've found it when you do eventually find it? What does the guy of your dreams look like? I want you to create a mental image of what your dream guy should look like. Why is this so important? Unless you are so desperate and will grab any man you can find from the street, you ought to do this. <laughs> okay, I'm going to make this a bit easier. Sit down, grab a pen and a piece of paper, and tell yourself a story about what that lucky person, who will soon become your husband, should look like. Have fun describing his qualities. Don't worry, I'm going to give you some examples to get you started. How old should he be? How tall is he? Is he overweight, thin, or just in between? Is he the outdoor or indoor type? Is he diet conscious or will he just eat anything? Where does he live? Does he live in your town or far away in a city of your dreams or on the other side of the world? Where was he born? Is he native to your country or a foreigner? What is his ethnicity? If you find this important, don't ignore the question. What are his religious beliefs? Is he actively religious? Did he go to college? What does he do for a living? What is the minimum income he must earn? Romance needs finance. 
Marriage needs a lot more serious attention to income, especially when you begin to have children. Would he like to start a family? You don't have time for time wasters, do you? Does he smoke? If you can't tolerate smokers, don't start. Does he drink? Is he a teetotaler? A moderate wine drinker? Or a weekend binger? That was fun, wasn't it? Now, get another sheet of paper and tell yourself. The three qualities that are most important for your life mate to have. The three habits you cannot tolerate in your life mate. Now, you may take a break. I'm sure you have a better idea of what Mr. Wright looks like. <laughs> you don't want to just grab one off the street in desperation, do you? Otherwise, you get a guy you are going to hate for the rest of your life. Now you have a nearly complete picture of your future husband. But it is yet a dream. Let's bring it a little down to reality. Bring out the questions you asked about that dream guy a few minutes ago. Now ask yourself the same questions and write the answers. Why am I asking you to do this? How is an athletic guy and a flabby couch potato going to work out? But don't get distressed just yet. You will have to present yourself in a way that will bring that dream guy. Make a list of your good qualities. Promise to work on how best to present them. Great marriages are founded on love, and love is mysterious. Many men marry a type they've always thought not their type. Many successful marriages are between two apparently incompatible persons. Yes, miracles do happen, but then I didn't promise to show you how to find a miracle. Do you want a genie who's going to pop out of a bottle to grant you a wish or two? Do you want a genie who will after that disappear? Poof! In a puff of smoke? No. What you want is a husband who will stick with you forever. It's time to go looking. The man of your dream will not come looking for you at home while you're watching television. No, no, no. You need to get adventurous and do things outside your comfort zone. Since you know what the gorgeous guy likes to do, 
It shouldn't be too difficult to find him. Let's go out looking. You may need to ditch part of your present lifestyle, though. Join an interest group. Become more active in your religious or civic communities. Meet more people. Make your lifestyle look more interesting. Where are the places you can get noticed? Do you realize your family and your friends may know a guy who also wants to settle down with the right woman? What about social media? Many marriages started on internet discussion forums. Do you like dogs, flowers, or whatever else? There are thousands of mini internet discussion groups. You may be able to hit it off with a guy who also shares your interest. Dating sites are also okay, but stick to those that are for matrimonial link-ups rather than casual flings. It might not be too bad to pop into a wedding event once in a while. A wedding event possibly contains more people that believe in marriage than anywhere else. Some of those may think it's time for them to get hitched up. Visit libraries, shopping centers, parks. Public places present opportunities to meet someone interesting. You need to remain confident you will find that man. Otherwise, you may lose energy for the search. You need to be confident and persistent because the matrimony journey is never a straightforward search. For some, it may last a few weeks or months. For others, it could be a journey of several years. The emotional repercussion of losing self-confidence and persistence could be severe. Regardless, never make it look like you're desperate. Never push yourself too hard to achieve your aim. Be confident, but also careful how you relate to the man who eventually catches your interest. For a quiet and withdrawing type, a woman who is too confident and assertive may be quite scary. You may think of yourself as merely self-assertive, but others may think you are being aggressive.
A party-loving guy may be just too happy to have his social life complemented by a vivacious partner. But then, a wife who is going to regularly ask him to do chores in the morning may fill him with horror. This particular advice may depend on your character and what the man of your dreams is like. Be yourself, but remain sensitive to the dreams of the men you meet. Yes, they do have dreams too. It is important to go out and socialize. It is also important to remain yourself. Never present yourself for what you are not, or you will certainly regret it later. Good men don't like fake women. Make yourself pretty, but never overdo it. Dress in a manner that will reveal and complement your good qualities. Dress not only to impress the man of your dreams, but also to please yourself. Make yourself pretty with a good dress for each occasion. There will always be someone out there who's going to be better looking than you anyway. <laughs> After the wig and the makeup come off, there must be something left of you to please your man. You have now met someone who appears interested in you, and you also think you might like him. And you also think you might like him. Don't play shy or hard Don't to get. Don't play shy or hard to get. Build a connection. Build a connection. Show him that you also like Show him. Show him that you also like him. If he smiles, return he the smiles, compliment. Return the compliment. Make eye contact with him Make as eye contact much as with possible, him as when, much you're as possible when you're but discussing. But don't stare. But don't stare. Always have a genuine smile. Always have that a genuine the smile eyes. that reaches the eyes. Ask him questions about himself. Ask him questions about himself. It will show him that you're it will interested show him, in him that you're interested in him. Do you like to laugh? Make him laugh too. Laughter is a great way to arouse someone's interest. Tell him a funny story that actually happened. Tell a story that shows how funny it was to you, not how stupid or dumb you or anyone else thinks you are. If he has done something really dumb, tell him a story that shows he's not the most stupid person in the world. By all means, tell a good story, and if you can't make it good, 
then don't try. Don't take this too far. You don't want to take the risk of looking boring and awkward, do you? Nearly every girl has one or two friends they talk to about their boyfriends. I am going to surprise you that guys also do it. They discuss their girlfriends. Just as it is with women, the opinion of a guy's friends may be important to your relationship. Make friends with his friends. You may want to make sure that they like you in a good sort of way. This doesn't mean that you have to be a pushover and bend over backwards to accommodate his friends. Are they rude and constantly disrespect you while he stands aside watching? then this is probably not the guy you want, and you should maybe reconsider your relationship with him. If he is yours, he is more likely to dump his friends than dump a good woman, soon to be his wife. But you really wouldn't want that. You need also to engage with his interests. Like the things he loves doing. Find out about his interests. Ask him about them and maybe try them out. That should be fun, isn't it? It's also a good way to make sure that things progress further than a few dates. You are now convinced he looks so much like your Mr. Right. Now get on with your own life. You need to make sure that you have your own life outside of him. This will show that you aren't clingy. The two of you will also have more stuff to talk about when you meet up. Marriage is like a long race. It's not a quick dash. Bring down the tempo of your activities together if he is going too fast for you. Don't drop everything to meet up with him every time he asks. Not that you want to blow him off and make him think you aren't interested. You also want to make it clear that even though he is the only man in your life, he is not the only thing going on in your life. A good man, if he also loves you, 
will value your individuality and happily enjoy the bits of time you spend together. Have nights out with just your girlfriends. If you don't have many exciting friends, go and do fun things by yourself. Again, don't overdo it to the extent that your constant excuses make him feel humiliated. Never make him feel like you are telling him he's not good enough. You are also not the only thing going on in his life, and he may find the relationship too tiring. He may decide the relationship is not worth the energy he is putting into it. Once in a while, take him out for one of his favorite activities. Regularly, send him little notes telling him why he means so much to you. Do little things to show how much you appreciate him. Make sure that you show how important he is to you. This will also make him feel that he's important to you. Don't take him for granted. Living your own life will give you the space to ask yourself, is he a friend or a husband? Many women don't understand the difference. A friend is someone you hang out with once in a while and have great fun with. A husband is one which you have committed to permanently live with. A fantastic marriage will be one in which you marry a fantastic friend. And thereafter, you have fantastic fun together all day and night for the rest of your life. Yes, that is why I called it fantastic, because it only happens in fairy tale fantasy stories. <laughs> Most marriages will be about thorns springing up in weird places at the worst possible time. Most marriages will be about both of you working at removing those nasty inconveniences. Does he present himself as a person you could trust to work things out together with you? He loves being with you. That's nice to know. But do you get the impression that he is your man, 
Otherwise, do you get the impression you are just someone he loves discussing his life with? Some girls are the regular agony aunt. Guys just love to come to them for advice about their lives. They love being popular with men who need a shoulder to cry on. Invariably, she ends up with a man who hangs around her all the time like a lost dog. Does that look like what you are to him? Otherwise, maybe this guy tells so good a story that you can't think of a future without him. Many women find so much a good friend in this new guy and sort of assume he is in this for marriage. Or they become afraid to ask for fear of losing him. Study him carefully. Is he for real? Is he a parasite to your friendship? Is he smooth-talking you? Let's face it. Many guys don't want to be anyone's husband right now. The hard truth is, many guys just want to have casual sex for as long as possible. They are unlikely to just give that up because you are looking for a husband. That swell guy you've just met is probably only looking for someone to go to bed with. Once you understand that, you will begin to better understand how to keep relationships. Remember, you are in search of a husband and not a party animal or sex partner. You need to minimize premarital sex. It takes away the interest of your partner toward marriage. Is he the marrying type? You need to gauge his interest in marriage. How does he feel about marrying you in particular? If he doesn't want to marry you, then don't waste your time with him. Move on and find someone else. How do you know whether he is likely to marry you? Ask him. If you've developed sufficient rapport, you may not feel so awkward asking him. And if he respects you enough, he will not lie to you about whether there is a place for you in his future.
What does he do for a living? Will he be able to financially support a family if you have one? A good man should want to marry a woman who is a good housekeeper. Not a housewife, but a wife who cares about where their money is coming from and where it's going. It's vital to understand what your guy does for a living and to ask how things are going with him. Don't prod him or interrogate him. Just take an intelligent interest in the source of his wealth. By doing this, you will likely go farther than any other woman in his life. Also show interest in your own personal finances. A good man would want to marry a woman who has a strong command of her finances. This means to him not having to constantly worry about how the family bill will be paid, even if he could afford to pay them. Be a low-maintenance woman. High-maintenance women generally take about two hours to get ready for an outing. They are absolutely in love with mirrors. They love to take dozens of selfies a day and are unappreciative of others, only of themselves. Learn to be able to leave the house in comfortably simple clothes. Learn to offer to pay dinner bills at the restaurant once in a while. Learn to say simple things like, thank you. He is a great guy. You really want to get married. But do you want to be married to and live with this person for the rest of your life? Relationships aren't about the destination, but about the journey. Enjoy your relationship. Relationships are to be enjoyed. Give yourself time to look at the relationship more clearly.
step back and let things move naturally in that direction. Give your relationship a reasonable length of time before you start to get more serious. Give yourself time to look at the relationship more clearly. Rushing into marriage may cause problems down the road. Allow your relationship to develop. Don't go out with a guy for a few dates and then begin to tell your friends that he's the one. Don't, after a moonlit night kiss, start to fantasize about your perfect marriage together. Allow that relationship to develop as it will. Spend time with him just being in the present relationship. Be gentle about your expectations from your relationship. If you are starting with unbelievably high standards, you are also setting yourself up for failure. Some women come into a relationship with their entire life planned out. She has figured out the size and location of the house they are going to buy together. She has determined how many kids they are going to have together and where the kids will go to school. She already knows what the kids' professions will be when they leave school. She has also planned where she would like to be buried when she dies. That's a huge amount of pressure to put on another person. In fact, the sensible guy may see the minefield ahead and safely flee the relationship. Imagine if you went into the relationship with no agenda and simply aimed to enjoy your time together. This way, 
you can compare the amazing guy you previously created in your head with this guy you're dating. Otherwise, years in the relationship, you may suddenly find that you have made a wrong turn somewhere. But then it will be too late. This is where a sad divorce comes from. My final advice is that you actually need to stop looking. I am sure you will consider this ridiculous, considering I said I'm here to help you find a husband. The fact is that women constantly feel an overwhelming pressure to find a guy to settle down with. Women find themselves living with this constant pressure to find a husband before it's too late. But that doesn't mean you need to look at every guy as if he will be the one. This habit will leave you constantly disappointed. Getting let down is something that shouldn't happen on a daily basis. Take a long, deep breath. Breathe. Stop putting impossible pressure on yourself and the men you date. Marriage does not need to happen right away. You need to stop looking for your husband in every guy. Let your life breathe. Interestingly, you will find that this independent attitude should fascinate a good man. It should give him the impression he does not have to put himself on the line to please you. Wouldn't it be the greatest thing to marry someone you will never feel compelled to impress? A bad marriage is like a lifetime in hell. A good marriage is like heaven on earth. Make this the kind of marriage you'd like to have.
Enjoy your friendships. Enjoy your life. There is only one life to live. Have fun. <laughs> 